okay uh, for making the uh, charcoal I have a paint can old paint can that's something that you could find in the woods people like to throw their paint cans out uh, you could also use an uh, upside down pot uh, you could all and, and and that's to keep the oxygen from getting to it or you can just uh, like everybody knows there's char there's a uh, charcoal left in the fire afterwards you just collect it and save it up but to make a bulk amount without it turning into ash you would need to prevent oxygen from getting into it and that's what confining it inside of a can does and then the hole allows the hydrogen and the other gases to escape but I poked a hole in here uh, I filled this up with apple wood uh, which is a hardwood which is the best to use uh, for charcoal this is my campfire I live in town so obviously I can't have a fire in my backyard due to permits due to ordinances so this is my campfire uh, I just started it it's gonna be a minute obviously it's not hot yet because the paper's still on the can so uh, probably talking 30 minutes or more before it's totally done okay you can see it gassing off uh, the reason why it's white is mostly uh, water vapor coming from the, the wood that was actually a little wet inside uh, plus it was outside in the snow uh, But the other main gas that is coming out of there is hydrogen and uh, As we all know hydrogen is uh, extremely flammable uh, This right here is a rudimentary gasifier uh, You could actually light that stream on fire uh, I'm not positive if you can right now with the uh, with the moisture coming out of it but uh but that is basically the gasifier chamber uh and and uh you know fire itself that you see here is not the wood burning it's the hydrogen gassing off and in, uh into flame it's uh, once it hits uh hits a certain temperature uh it ignites and it continues to gas off and that's why you're left with charcoal okay here we have the charcoal opened up the can uh, there's a little bit in there with some brown on it so uh, obviously it didn't totally consume the wood uh, my fire must have not been big enough for long enough but I can still get what I can out of here but uh, as you can see there's a lot of charcoal and as you can see there's a lot less than you originally put in once it gasses off you lose a lot of mass but that's the end of the charcoal process gathering these uh, hardwood ashes that's the uh, next part of the process okay here's my little quad pod got, got the bandana tied up at each of the four legs I got my burning vessel that I made my charcoal out of as my container uh, and then here's a uh, uh, what I'm using to pour my water in uh, what I'll do is the concentration of lye or sodium hydroxide 
in ash is about 5 to 10 percent so I have to to get as much lye I will run this through a couple times uh, I'll pour it back into this little container and then back into the other container uh, I but the concentration itself I don't think will get high enough hopefully to uh, burn through that bandana uh, or mess with my aluminum here uh, this actually might be steel not positive uh, but at that point I'm gonna have to uh, reduce it down in a fire till you got you know a nice little bit in the bottom and that should be concentrated uh, sodium hydroxide lye so we'll get to that point next okay I got it back on the fire here I'm rendering down that weak solution of lye water until I get a nice strong solution of lye water uh, a couple ways you can check it not really much you could do out in the woods other than just go percentage wise let's say you had you know a full a full thing here you should get down to maybe a tenth left and that would be very strong uh, but if you put an egg in there and it floats you know you have a strong solution but once again you probably wouldn't have that in the wild but I'm pretty much down to where I need to be probably can't really see in there that well but that's where I'm at at this moment okay after coming out of the uh, live solution I added water to fill the rest of the can up to dilute the lye solution so it wouldn't burn me as I did this process but uh I basically just put a bandana over the top of the can tipped it over turned it over and allowed it to drain out this is what I'm left with uh, now to continue to getting the rest of the lye solution out of out of the uh, activated charcoal I got to put it back into my strainer I put a new bandana on here because the other one had ash and stuff in it which would defeat the purpose of me washing it out so I put a new bandana in here I'll probably drain maybe two gallons three gallons through here so everything looks nice and clear and uh and then that'll take us to the very last stage The granules are now nice and clean, clear of the uh, sodium hydroxide solution. The lye uh, should be uh, pretty much cleaned right out of it at this point. It's still wet and it's ready now for the uh, all the um, all the ash and the uh, fine fine dust should be gone and it should be ready for the final bake. Okay, uh, one last burn, basically to dry it out, get more, get all the, uh, the water, uh, that saturated it out of it, uh, it will be, uh, and to further erode it, um, it will become, uh, like, hyper, like, super dry, and ready to absorb any moisture, uh, gases anything uh, you can see the water vapor basically coming out of that hole uh, one thing I failed to mention was when you do this last burn once again you'll have to put that lid on uh, you don't want oxygen getting in there or it might just turn into ash on you so you don't want to add oxygen into the mix So this is the final product, homemade activated charcoal. 
Uh, I will say during the process, this is the first time I've done it. I've done a lot of research, but this is the first time I've actually done it. Uh, one thing I would do better is on the top here, as you can see, I have a lot of larger uh, granules or chunks of charcoal. Uh, they're not going to be as efficient as the finer dust that's on the bottom here, uh, just because they have less surface area. So I would have changed that. Uh, okay, another another uh, note, uh, when you're doing the wash stage, uh, you need to use as clean as water as possible uh, because the charcoal is activated at that time. And every time you pour water through it, uh, you are actually filtering that water. So if you're using, uh, you know, tap water, you're talking chlorine's going to get caught in that. Uh, and it's going to start uh, filling up your charcoal. Uh, it, it takes a lot to fill it up. So even if you have to use stream water, it's not going to totally ruin your charcoal. But you have to do that process to get the lye out. Okay. Uh, I will say, you're... When we're talking uh, just regular charcoal that we started with, uh, which everybody usually uses for their uh, water filter out in the wild, uh, you're only you're only taking out stuff with uh, uh, stuff like uh, uh, fungi, you know, f funguses. Uh, you're taking out uh, particulate, obviously, but you're taking out uh, a most biological things so it is a good process you're taking out most biological agents uh you're also taking out uh um you, you know you're not going to be taking out viruses uh because they're too small there's you know they're sub micron they're gonna they're gonna make it through so uh or at least most of them will so that's why activated charcoal is the way to go uh, so with activated charcoal not only do you get uh, take out fungus and uh, most biological things and you know most microorganisms activated charcoal is going to take out all microorganisms uh, it's going to take and it's going to now it, it's going to take out the extra for you which is uh, chemicals and it's going to, in the air filter, it's going to take out uh, most gases. Uh, and it's going to take out most uh, uh, war gases. Uh, all war gases, actually. Um, it's going to take out uh, viruses. And it's been proven that uh, activated charcoal will filter out uh, radio isotopes which you would get from a fallout from a uh, nuclear uh, issue so so you could actually filter water if you had to uh, you could breathe through the your apparatus uh, charcoal filter apparatus on your face uh, I'm not saying you need to be out there doing that stuff but I'm saying if you had to you have the means to not get uh, irradiated uh, but this, you know, obviously charcoal has nothing to do with the, your skin absorption and stuff like that of, uh, radioisotopes, but, uh, radioiodine, which fills up your thyroid, uh, it, it, it is, uh, taken out. It is filtered out, uh, not only because, uh, activated charcoal take, takes out, uh, radioisotopes, but it also takes out iodine. So radioiodine really has no chance, uh. The biggest thing is you have to make sure you have no leaks in your mask. Uh, and the other thing is, is after a while, when it's hard, starts getting hard to breathe, that is because the charcoal is filling up. That's time to make a new mask or put on a new mask. Uh, so those are the, the main reasons I made this charcoal. Uh, I proved that you could do it in a wilderness situation with the chemicals you have available to you in the wilderness so i i really hope i uh i i gave you something to think about and something you'll try and uh and nothing else stick it in the memory bank if, you know shit ever does happen you have a means of making it okay thank you